Hey guys, it's Chris. From rivers that boil to caves that will leave you literally breathless, join me as I reveal eight real places on Earth that seem scientifically impossible. Number 8. Muvilla Cave the Muvilla Cave in Romania was sealed away from the rest of the world for over 5 million years, and due to this, the atmosphere is not anything like the rest of the world. For example, the oxygen in the atmosphere is one-third to one-half less than the base atmosphere of the planet, while also having exponentially more carbon dioxide. It also has traces of sulfur, methane, and more. Due to this, the air is completely toxic to most life, and yet Muvilla Cave has a thriving ecosystem, which has confounded many who've studied it. At present, there are over 48 species of creatures living in Muvilla Cave, including many who don't exist anywhere else in the world. They have somehow adapted themselves to surviving in this sulfuric place, while also finding ways to eat via foam that's grown on stones in the cave. As if that wasn't enough, recent finds prove that these creatures have been surviving here for a long time, as a new snail that was found in the cave apparently has been living there for 2 million years. To visit the cave, you must have a special permit and a suit, otherwise you won't last very long. Number 7. The Boiling River Thanks to explorer Andres Ruo, we now know that there's a river in the Amazon rainforest that is quite literally boiling. It's called the Shani Timpisha and has been known to the native people of Peru who live in the forest near it for quite some time. The temperature of the water is a scorching 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which means that just about anything alive that goes into the river will be boiled alive. Even the mud that is made from the water is so hot to touch it can cause third degree burns. And to be clear, this isn't a small river either. It's 82 feet wide and can reach down about 16 to 20 feet in places. Finally, this tributary of the Amazon River is 4 miles in length. This river is considered the only boiling river in the world today, and there's no definitive answer as to why the river is this way. The best guess is that this river is somehow attached to a geothermal vent, which exhumes a lot of heat and thus makes it boil to such a degree. There is also a thought that the boiling water comes from somewhere else and is pooled into the river, but neither has been proven, and the geothermal vent theory has been questioned since the nearest volcano is 400 miles away down the river, thus adding to the mystery of the place even more. Despite it being a majorly dangerous river, there are people who use parts of the river in their everyday lives, including boiling food or doing laundry. There are even healing centers that use the water for their practices. And now for number 6, but first, be sure to subscribe to Worldlist if you haven't already. And when you subscribe, click that little notification bell so you get notified of the latest videos. Number 6. Grunar Sea in Austria, there's a lake called Grunar Sea, also known as Green Lake, that takes the concept of rising and falling waters of the area to a different extreme. Mainly, during the summer, fall, and winter, the lake stands at a very basic level and allows people to enjoy the park that surrounds it. However, in the spring, the waters of the lake rise so much that the park is quite literally drowned by the waters. To put this in context, during the off-season, the depth of the lake goes down to a max 7 feet. But when spring comes, the depth of the lake rises so much that it goes down to 39 feet. It also doubles in length size from 150 meters wide to 250 meters wide. If you're wondering how this could possibly happen, that would be because this part of Austria is near the Hochschwab Mountains. And these mountains are somewhat infamous for having tons of snow built on them over the winter. So when spring arrives, all the snow melts and heads right towards the lake, thus increasing its base levels by a significant amount. So much so, in fact, that during the spring, the park is considered a scuba adventure. Because if you get the gear and go underwater, you'll see park benches, bridges, and even the base of massive trees all drowned underwater. This effect lasts until midsummer, and that's when the water levels dissipate and go down, bringing back the park that was there to start with. Number 5. The Petrifying Well There are many stories in history and mythology about people or objects being petrified or being turned to stone. But in Narsboro, North Yorkshire, there's a place that honestly does this for real. It's known as the Petrifying Well, and it's been turning things to stone ever since it was discovered many years ago having been an attraction since 1630 in England. Not surprisingly, this place once had a very superstitious nature about it, due in large part to the fact that this well was next to a cliff face that appeared to have the face of a skeletal human on it. 
What's more, before the well was discovered, there was a witch in the area known as Mother Shipton, who was said to bring darkness on the land, as well as see the future. Her witchcraft was blamed for the well being able to turn things to stone. However, when scientists were able to test the waters of the well, they found out something very interesting. Simply that the water was high in mineral content. So by leaving various objects in the well, which many have done over time, the water will slowly turn them into stone. This process has been likened to how stalactites are made. Technically speaking, there are more than one petrifying well in the world. It should also be noted that if you touch the water yourself, your skin will not get to stone on the spot. The process, again, is not instantaneous. Number 4. Mariana Trench the ocean remains mostly unexplored, and Mariana Trench even less so. Located over 36,000 feet below sea level, which makes it deeper than Mount Everest is tall, this place is one of, if not the deepest part of the ocean that we know about, even though we still know so very little about it. That's because the deeper you go into the ocean, the more pressure is exerted on the creatures or objects that go down that far. If a human were to somehow on their own go beyond 2,000 feet below sea level, they'd slowly be crushed by the ocean's pressure. The pressure at the Mariana Trench is over 15,000 pounds per square inch. And despite being in an area with no sunlight and tons of water pressure, there's a thriving ecosystem that lives down in the Mariana Trench. In fact, through the four people that have managed to get to the trench via submersibles, we've gotten only a brief look at that life. There are creatures large and small in there, and they seem incredibly comfortable in their environment. What's more, they're so adapted to the pressure that many attempts to capture a creature from the trench and bring it to to the surface has resulted in the poor thing being deformed upon making it to the top due to the change in atmospheric pressure. It's unknown how many creatures, plants, and more live in the Mariana Trench. Number 3. Lake Karache Near the Ural Mountains in central Russia stood Lake Karache, which had the dubious honor of being a lake next to a former Soviet Union nuclear weapon factory. As a result of this, the Russians in 1951 felt the need to dump the nuclear waste products they were making into the lake itself. This caused the waters of the lake to become so radioactive that being near the area unprotected for an hour is fatal. And to be clear, vast amounts of waste were poured into the lake, which led to many problems especially in 1957, when there was an explosion in the nearby factory, and that caused the lake to spew parts of its radioactive water across the nearby landscape. About 9,000 square miles, to be specific, were affected by the water being thrown into the air. Then, in 1967, the lake had dried up, but the radioactivity continued via the ground, which had its particle dust spread all over via the winds, causing even more problems for the local population. The area was so dangerous that eventually it was filled to the brim with concrete, which is known to block radioactivity, and yet it's still considered an area that's dangerous, despite these preventative measures. Number 2. The Double Tree of Casorzo In Italy, in the place of Piedmont, there's a tree that is truly unlike most trees on Earth. Because at first glance, you'd believe that it's one rather exotically shaped tree. But rather, it's two trees in one. For this tree is both a cherry tree and a mulberry tree. To be clear, there are trees and other plants out there that have done similar things. It's known as parasitic growth, where they latch onto another fully healthy being and grow alongside them. However, the double tree of Casorzo is rather unique because of its size. These are two trees growing on top of each other and expanding their branches to impressive lengths. Due to this, there are no current explanations for how it happened. Most times that a double tree occurs, they're small and do not have a long life. Yet this one has lasted many years and is an impressive size in regard to both trees and their massive branches. Number 1. Beacon of Maracaibo When there's a storm, there's often lightning. But in Venezuela, there's lightning that virtually never stops. This is known as the Beacon of Maracaibo. Specifically, this happens every night in western Venezuela over the Catatumbo River. Starting at around 7 p.m., lightning will start to strike the river, and it won't stop for the next 10 hours. This storm happens between 140 and 260 days of the year and can strike around 280 times an hour. What makes this phenomenon so special is that no one is clear as to why the lightning does this so frequently and so unendingly. There have been many theories, including that there was uranium in the bedrock of the lake and that it was causing the strikes. But others say that it's a unique weather pattern that's formed because of the mountains that surround the area. Neither theory has been definitively proven, though. We do know that weather can conditions can affect it though, because during a drought in 2010, it caused the event to temporarily stop for a few months. 
Many have taken pictures of the frequent and powerful lightning that comes over the area, which isn't too hard, as not only are the lightning strikes frequent, but they're so powerful they can be viewed around 250 miles away. Sounds like a really cool experience, right? Thanks for watching. What did you think of these scientifically impossible areas that honestly do exist? Were you surprised at all by any of what you just saw? Did any of these areas speak to you especially? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time on World List.